Hi everyone, welcome back for the second of three videos about shadow puppets. In the first video, I started a story about a frog named Elodie. And to think of an adventure for Elodie, I asked you if you had any ideas about where she's going and a problem she might encounter on the way. Jesse wrote in and said, Elodie is going to the North Pole to visit Santa, but suddenly five yetis jump out. She calls Santa, but they still need help. Luckily, a nice polar bear comes and helps them. Then they go to the North Pole and celebrate. They have tea and cake and other sweet things. My friend, the author and illustrator Jeff Mack said, she takes the balloon very close to a river and just skims the surface. At that moment, a crocodile tries to take a bite out of the basket. The balloon takes off again and the crocodile is left hanging from the basket by its teeth. The Hunt family, Aaron, Brooke, Max, and Hollis, said she arrives at the construction site of the new tiny house she is building, inspired to complete it and surround it with a field of wildflowers which grow after a rainstorm. I want to say a special hello to my friend Ms. Zyron and all her students at Passages Charter School in Chicago. You sent in so many ideas, it was really fun reading them all. I won't read all of them now, but just a few examples. Elodie's air balloon popped and fell safely to the ground. Elodie got a ticket because she's driving. Elodie's car breaks down on the highway and people started to laugh at her. The frog is going to the bakery, but when she gets there, it is closed, so she made her own cake for her grandma's birthday. A lightning storm occurs while Elodie is in the air balloon and it gets struck out of the sky. She lands in the snow and does not know where she is. That one is really interesting to me because it's fun to think about how you would make lightning in a shadow puppet show. Her car breaks down and she doesn't know what to do. She was having a nice cup of tea. She finds a haunted hopscotch game and has to figure out the math problem of the haunted hopscotch or have bad luck for life. She is going fishing, then she caught a shark and called a giant friendly monster to help her scare the shark away, and the monster helped her go fishing. And please add more characters in the story, including a little kitty named Flower. Well, thank you for sending in all of these ideas. Now what I'm going to do is put some of these ideas together and see if I can come up with what happens next in the story. So maybe where Elodie is going is to a seed shop to buy wildflower seeds. So she comes back with her seeds and packs a picnic and goes up in her balloon. And from her balloon, she scatters the seeds. But then a storm comes and blows the balloon away over the ocean, and ice and snow start to form on the balloon and weigh it down, and she has to add more hot air, and it's as it's skimming the surface of the water, a shark comes and bites the basket, and as the balloon lifts up again, the shark is still hanging on. So she takes pepper out of her picnic basket and sprinkles it on the shark's nose, and the shark sneezes and lets go. I don't know if sharks really sneeze or not, but I just thought that would be funny for the story. Then, lightning strikes her balloon, and she crashes down in the snow and doesn't know where she is. But she hears some animal crying, and it turns out to be a lost baby polar bear. Maybe the polar bear can be named Flower. They hear sleigh bells and see Santa flying overhead. So they think, well, if we can find Santa, Santa can help us. So they start walking in the direction of Santa's house. And just then, a Yeti jumps out and they run away. Now I'm ready to start making the puppets I need for this part of the story. I cut out letters for a title, Elodie's Adventure, and I put these flaps over them so when I pull them away, the letters are revealed. And I can use a flap for Elodie's smile too, and I'll put a paper hinge on, and that way her expression can change. For the lightning, I'll use a second lamp. I thought I could use a flap for the lightning also, but it looked a little too static when I tried it. So I'll move the whole card instead, and that will give the lightning more motion. 
I'll cut some ocean waves out of tracing paper. And then suspend them from thread so that they swing back and forth. Now to make the shark hold on to Elodie's basket, I'll bend a paper clip and tape it on, and then I'll take a twist tie, trim it down, and bend it into a hook that will fit that paper clip. the hook onto Elodie's basket, and then to make the shark grab on, I just have to hook the paper clip on. So I'll bring her balloon down, hook the shark on, and lift the balloon up again. Now for the Yeti. It would be nice if the Yeti could wave its arms around. So I'll do a sketch and then flip the paper over and rub the back to transfer the sketch onto the cardboard. And I'll cut out the Yeti's body separately from its arms, leaving some overlap. Now to make the arms pivot, I'm going to poke a needle and thread through. tape off one end, then put the needle through the shoulder, then tape off the other side and trim the excess thread. I'll cut a strip of plastic out of this bottle and use it as a rod to move the arm. It's a little flimsy, so I'll crease it to make it a little more rigid. And now I'll poke this needle through here. And tape off my thread to the plastic rod. and it will pivot on that point. But if you don't have a needle and thread, you can just mark the pivot point and then cut a slot all the way to it. slip a piece of string all the way through to that point. Tape it off. Slip the string through to the other point. Tape off the other side. and you can attach the rod the same way. Slip the string through, tape it off, then cut a slot to the pivot point where you want to attach the rod, and slip the string through there, Take the back and trim the excess.
know, I think it might work better if I attached the rods at the elbows. That's something that's nice about working with these materials. It's very easy to make changes if your first design doesn't work, or you come up with a better idea. I think I'll try attaching a cross piece to the two rods to see if that will make it easier to control the arms. Now I think I'm going to spend a little time making the polar bear a more elaborate puppet. So I'll attach the legs and then attach string to them so they can be moved just by pulling this string. And then I'll attach the polar bear to a rod The string going down so that I can move the legs with just one finger. Then I'll attach the same mechanism to the other side. So with just two fingers, I can move all four legs. And now we're ready for the next part of Elodie's adventure.
figure out now is, how does the story end? If you have any ideas about that, I would love to hear them. You can send your ideas to this email address. Please send your ideas by Friday, April 9th. And in the next video, I'll show you some more construction techniques for making shadow puppets and the conclusion of Elodie's adventure. Bye-bye.